All right, everybody, welcome back to the number one television program in the history of the entire universe. I am Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon, The Blackest Heart, and The Lonesome Crown, all three books published by Simon & Schuster's Saga Press. Today I'm going to be reviewing one of my favorite fantasy novels of all time, and that is The Shadow Rising by Robert Jordan, book number four in The Wheel of Time. My favorite book in The Wheel of Time, actually. Um, I've got the entire Wheel of Time collection right here. All first edition novels. I bought them. I started buying The Wheel of Time books back in the early 90s when the first one came out. And in fact, this one might have came out in 1989. I can't remember. But I bought it right off the shelf the day it was released, and I've been a fan and buying the books ever since, buying them as I was a kid, eagerly anticipating the release of all of the books as they would come out over the years. <clears throat> um, that's how old I am. I'm just an old dude. Um, but I do remember this was, I was eagerly anticipating the release of this book um, because I loved the first three books so much. Um, and I remember the day this one came out, and I remember exactly where I bought it. I remember the day I bought it. I remember going to a specific bookstore in Salt Lake City to specifically get this book. In fact, I even wrote down the name of the books. I mean, I, I often do, I used to, I don't do that as much anymore, but a lot of times I would, when I would buy a book, I would write down the name of the bookstore I bought the book at. And this one I bought at Sam Weller Zion's Bookstore in Salt Lake City, Utah, the day it came out. So it's a special book to me. Um, one of the reasons this became, this was my favorite book of the four that I'd read up to that point. And it stayed my favorite book kind of based off of where this, the direction the series took after this book. It kind of dovetailed into a lot of different plot lines and characters that have kind of were boring to me for quite a while in the series, but this is the book that where kind of all of our main characters that we grew to love through the first three books, we're all kind of still together and we all kind of, and Robert Jordan was kind of writing about all of them equally. Because as you know, in the subsequent books, there are books a book will go by where some of our favorite, favorite characters don't even make an appearance in the book. Um, they're just left out entirely. Um, and then we're introduced to a, shit ton of other characters that um it just becomes it becomes over uh, burdensome is what it was although i still did like for the most part the rest of the series and i specifically liked the last four books in the series i say i love the first four books in the series i really really liked the last four books in the series it was that middle chunk of books that kind of was a bit of a slog for me um Maybe even book five was all right, and book six was even cool. It was it was like book six between book six and I don't even remember how books in the series like one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen books in the series. I would say um, one two three four about four of four of them. Yeah, the okay thirteen books. So so that's the first four were cool. The first six were cool. Let's say the first six were cool. The last four were cool. The middle three or four. Let's just get to this book. Okay, let's talk about the covers first, because you know I love graphic design and cover illustration. Like I said, this came out in 1992. Daryl K. Sweet did all the covers. I do like the Daryl K. Sweet covers a lot. I think they're colorful. They are nostalgic for me. I have no problem with any of them. I just think they're dope. Um, I have this hardcover version. Of course, I have a paperback, a little paperback version. And then I got all the new releases that came out with these new covers, which are pretty cool, too. And this cover artist was... Sam Weber, and that's a pretty cool cover of um, Matt and uh, the Ravens and things like that. So, all in all, the covers are good. Have no problem with any of the covers. Um, so this book, oh, it's got a map too. The hardcover has these great colorful maps by Tom Canty, the artist Tom Canty, who was a cover artist, a really good cover artist in his own right. Um, anyway, um, so let's talk about the book. Uh, the prologue is told from the perspective of a character named Min, M-I-N, one of my favorite characters. She is entering Tar Valon. We get to, um, through her eyes, 
see Robert Jordan's gorgeous description and detailed description of the city, the White Tower, its history, its landscape, the world around it. It's just a really brilliant way that Robert Jordan did of introducing us back into this world. I think Robert Jordan is a great writer. I think his prose and his descriptions are always on point. Um, just a master at the craft. Um, and we see it immediately with the prologue, starting with Min, who's one of my favorite characters, along with Evan... Evendiha, I don't know how to spice, but most of the girls that are in love with Rand are kind of my favorite characters. And there's a bunch of them. Min, Evendia, Elaine, Egwen, and, uh, you know, I mean, there's just a bunch. Anyway, um, so we see um, uh, Ace, Min, Min um, the Aesidia, uh, we, get, we, we can see the glimpses of her love for Rand. Um, now, then um, we kind of jump to the Stone of Tear, which is a place where the climax of book three happened. We, we jump into the story with Perrin and Fail, who Perrin, of course, is one of our three main characters, Matt, Perrin, and Rand. Um, the three boys from the three rivers, or is it the two rivers? I can't remember what river city it was. It was a city that came from a small town. Um, and they are trying to figure out their next move. They don't know whether they want to hitch their wagon to Rand's star anymore. They want to go kind of back to the two or three rivers, wherever it is they're from. And, uh, well, it's where Perrin's from. Fail kind of follows him. But Perrin's got his own magical, you know, Rand is dealing with the sword of Kalindor and his magic. He is the dragon reborn. People are coming to terms with the fact that, oh my god, it's Rand, he's the dragon reborn. Um... Perrin's got his own issues, his own magical issues, and he, he, he sees through the wolf eyes, he's got this axe, there's a few things that are going on with him that he's got to figure out, do I go back home, do I warn my home, I mean, what do we do, um, Perrin's, uh, he, Perrin kind of, he, Perrin is one of the tavern, the, the people, he's, he's bound to the wheel, or whatever it is, he's bound to the fate, the fate has chosen him along with a lot of the other characters. He wants to kind of help Rand as the Dragon Reborn. Fail is a little bit skeptical. Matt, one of the other Tavaran, is struggling even more to accept Rand as the Dragon Reborn. He seeks out some advice from Tom Maryland, who's another character. Um, uh, it's kind of like... And then, there, and then, of course, we've got Egwene and Nenev. There are other characters that uh, left the town of two rivers or three rivers or i should just look it up and see what it is i'm probably wrong it's probably the shire they might have left the shire um let's see it is white bridge here where are we at white bridge the, the, the two rivers i knew it was that i called it three rivers first two rivers hashtag the shire is where they left from okay so um the uh Egwen, Nanyev and Elaine are the three girls that left the small town. Matt, Perrin, and Rand are the three boys that left the small town. They left the sm small town under the tutelage or the escort or the protection of Morgaine and Lan. Again, Lan is one of my favorite characters. And in the, in the interplay between Lan and Nanyev, of course, is, is stellar. Um, the interplay between Ev Evienda and Min and Elaine is stellar. Um... I love those love triangles, although this is bigger than a love triangle. Um, I love the way they all kind of converse and they get frustrated with each other and all that. I love the fact that Min has her own sort of magical ability where she can sort of has this foresight. She can see glimpses and images of people's futures. That's a really great way to set up tension and mystery for the rest of the series. It's just absolutely fantastic. Um... And these are all the reasons why I loved this book the most, is because all of these characters are in the book, including even sort of peripheral characters like, um, uh, is it Gawain? And uh, what is Gawain's, the guy that goes around with Gawain? I can't remember his name. Gawain and uh, Galahad or Galad. What the f is his name? I, I should look this stuff. I just read the book about these people. Anyway, you know who I'm talking about. A lot of these guys, um, uh, kind of in the th books after this, books four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten ish, a lot of these characters separate and go their separate ways. And like I said, we miss some whole books go by where we're just not even involved with that character story at all. They're just left. We just don't know. And this is kind of the last book where kind of everything is still sort of 
focused on the main characters that Robert Jordan interest, introduced us to in the um, first book that we've been following through four massive tomes. And I think that's why it was always my favorite. And I think there's a lot of action sequences in this book that are pretty cool and pretty dope. Uh, there's just a lot going on in this. I mean, it's a thousand page novel of just fantasy delightfulness and adventure and interplay and politics and evil lords and dark lords and interesting creatures and interesting races of different people interacting and Rand, and the angst, and the teenage angst, and just all of that combined, just make the first four books in the Wheel of Time some of the best fantasy ever written, culminating with this fourth book, and then, like I said, dipping off a little bit with book five, and then a little bit more with book six, and then book seven, eight, nine, ten, uh, you know, but then it picks up again with the, you know, the final four books, and it, and it ends in a rousing fashion. That's kind of the way I see the whole series. Um, but that's my review of The Shadow Rising. It is just one of the greatest fantasy books written. It's the greatest fantasy book written in The Wheel of Time, in my opinion, and one of the greatest fantasy books ever written. If you've ever watched my um, top 100 fantasy books videos, you'll know that. So anyway, that's my review of uh, The Shadow Rising. Solid 10 out of 10.